Yeah, this your boy Naughty Dre right here for TNSP Sports Net. Right here with Stevie Bags of the Arizona Cardinals, man. And we had this charity event, CETA, charity event doing a lot of things for Atlanta's youth as well as youth around the country. Um, what made you set out to do something like this? Um, man, you know, to be candid with you, it's, a, it's been something that my, my mother had instilled in me uh, from, from a young age. I, I saw her giving back uh, to young, young ladies when I was in high school and, and, and university at Bethune-Cookman. And um, it was something that just became second nature. I didn't even know I was doing it when I was in, at Bethune. People used to ask me to come speak at elementary schools and things of that nature to the youth. And I didn't know that I was actually giving back by doing that. You know, usually people relate giving back to tangible things or money or, you know, shoes. Or what, but knowledge is more important than all that stuff combined. So with that being said, um, it became a passion of mine, and you know, my mother and I, my rookie year, decided to come up with the CETA Foundation. And creating empowerment through autonomy is the acronym. And what we do is just use this leverage uh, that I have as an athlete and entertainer to give back and partner with others to give back to the community. Because you know, having this voice, having this leverage, is a uh, is bigger than maybe a parent. And and a child may listen to what I have to say more so than their own parent even though I'm not playing as an important role as their parent, but they just might listen to it. So to answer your question, it stemmed from my mother, Lola. Um, the philanthropic whole vibe came from Lola. Exactly. Well, yeah, I've been kind of following you for a while since uh, I followed you on Facebook and now it's on Twitter. And I noticed you did a lot of things when you were up in the CFL in Canada. Are you also planning to take your um, Philanthropic works to Arizona. Now that's where you at. Oh yes, I, I've been there. I've been in Arizona since the end of March, and I've been doing things in the community since I touched down, man. And um, the, the community there has embraced me as well, man. And I and I, I'm elated to have my NFL tag back because now I know what to do with it. When I first came in the league, I didn't understand what it was to be in this position as a pro athlete, but now I I, I'm, I'm, I have a total understanding of how important this role is and this this tag is that I have and I'm going to use it to the best of my ability because I look at it as an opportunity that the father gave me to, to bless somebody else so he's blessing me to be a blessing now since you coming from Bethune Cookman which is a uh, HBCU, HBCU school yes, sir. a lot of good players All come from HBCU long. schools yeah. but they don't get the notoriety at some of the bigger schools there you go does that make your grind harder bro 100% 100% man I mean I was a three-time All-American at Bethune-Cookman. I had 40 sacks, you know, in my career. NCAA record for tackles for loss. I was black college player of the year, so I won the same award as Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, Michael Strahan. I mean, you name it, man. But, um, you know, I had better stats than Jared Allen. Jared Allen played on one double-A, just like me. But because of the lack of respect for the level of competition, people, especially as a linebacker, outside linebacker, they don't really respect that. So you have to, man, I played in every league, NFL, NFL Europe, Arena, and Canada. And so my grind has been different. My grind has been uh, one that, now looking at it, I, I respect the grind and respect what I had to go through when I was going through it. You know, obviously, I'm like, man, why you put me through this, Father? Because I know what my ability had. And I knew I should have been playing in the league a long time ago, but I had to go through some maturation off the field as well as on the field because he's not going to give you nothing you can't handle, man. Now, Carlos Dansby left. You brought Joy Porter in. We got Stevie Bass coming in. Uh, the defense is pretty good with a guy like Darnell Dockett on, on that side. How much competition is there going to be for you to get the playing time you want in Arizona? Bro, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, the, the last person to lead the CFL in quarterback sacks there's a guy by the name of Cameron Waite. He was in Miami at the, uh, at, for Miami Dolphins. He signed with Miami Dolphins now. Him and Joey Porter ended up splitting time last year, and now Joey Porter's no longer in Miami. Right. So <laughs> I'm just, I'll leave it at that. I mean, the CFL is uh, it's, it's more difficult to rush the passer in the CFL. We're a yard off the ball, number one. We have less, um, less time during the play clock, and we have less downs. So for me to have you know, done all the things in my first year starting um, as a player up there in, in Canada and dominate that way is just testament to the fact that now being back on the 11-man game, 
man, I feel so much more comfortable. I'm looking forward to the competition, but I, I tell myself every day, these people didn't sign you for nothing. Right. And so that's why I'm here to make, I'm here to make plays. I'm here to do what I have to do to, uh, to be successful at the highest level that you can play at. From one drag to another, how long you been growing, man? I've been in the game since 2004. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Florida, South Florida. Right. Fort, shout out to Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, man. Chasing rabbits. 954, yeah, exactly. So, you know, we got a ton of guys down there, man, that's locked up. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm so I'm so blessed, man, to, to be be here, man. I appreciate you guys coming out. And uh, continue to follow us, man, because trust me, man, it's, it's going it's going down, it's going up from here. Oh yeah, it's going sure. up from here. Trust sure. Continue to follow us at TNSP Sports Net. Hey man, we love what you're doing for the kids, man. Naughty Dread love the kids. TNSP Sports Net, we love the kids, and uh, hey, we are gonna follow uh, let me, Stevie let me, Bass. Let me share something with you. Oh, go ahead, share it with me. We we don't call them kids. We we call them children. Exactly. The definition of the word kid is a baby goat or animal, right. and so. If we believe that the power of the tongue speaks life or death, we're not going to call them out of their name. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what we do with the foundation. Just give them knowledge, man, so that we, they understand who they are and how powerful they can be. You know, so, man, it's just things like that, bro, that we do, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I appreciate it. It take, a, it take a true man to accept, you know, wisdom. You know what I'm saying? So, God bless, bro. Please appreciate it. God bless the children. All day. All day. East side. Stevie Bad. A lot of jail. What's up? <laughs>